Is this a nice little herd? Sally, have you calmed down? You seem to be okay with them now. I'll keep a close eye on you. You know that? I also thought that I would take this opportunity to introduce you or introduce the cows to you properly. I know Sally is kind of the star here, <laughs> whether or not uh, she will end up in the freezer. But look at this, looks quite promising right now. Anyway, so um, this cow here, her name is Lisa. This is the little... Uh, okay. Wow. You never know. You know, because she's the youngest and Sally is uh, still quite nervous, these two are the ones that cause a little uh, fight, little fights and, and nervosity in the, in the flock here. Anyway, so um, her name is Lisa. She is, is the calf that um, was in the forest for a while. Obviously here in the back, that's Sally. This one here, her name is Lizzie, Elizabeth, Lizzie. And then when we bought her, she already had the name from the Swedish farmer. He called her Bella. And this little calf, uh, we call him Biffen. <laughs> that's actually something that only our Swedish viewers or Scandinavian viewers will really understand, I believe. Um, it basically means the beef, <laughs> but it has more meaning to the Swedish ear. So Biffen, Bella, Lizzie, Sally, and Lisa. So that's our flock of cows right now. Um, at some point we'll end up with a flock where we won't be able to name them anymore. But for right now, that's really fun. And you guys, you are famous. Can you believe that? You are the stars. Sally, somebody suggested you should have your own YouTube channel. What do you think of that? Huh? If you can make a living off of that, Sally, then if <laughs> then your expensive expenses might be paid. There are two more piles of hay here, so the cows uh, could go there easily to to eat. But you saw the old the old cow; she's the highest in the hierarchy. Um, she just came, and the others had to go. That's what just happened. I would also like to do a little Q&A right now that I'm standing here and um, talk a little bit about uh, what cattle breed this is. This question has been coming up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our fence system, which has uh, been in the talk <laughs> in the comment section. And I would like to um, share a little bit about our future plans for the cattle. So first off, this cattle breed is called a it's called Scottish Highland cattle, like the name sa name says. Um, these cows come from Scotland, and for uh, a very very long time, they have lived um, in big wild flocks in the Scottish Highlands, and that's also why they um, why they look this old old way still. How cows used to look much more um, some few hundred years ago. And that climate there, and the fact that they had to survive by themselves, that made that they got really, really good survival instincts. You see their long fur, they have a double fur layer, which now benefits us in the winter time because they use less feed because they're insulated so well. They, they need less hay, um, they need less hay to, um, to, to, to heat themselves up. So, um, that is one cool thing. Now, um, they also are really, really good mothers, you know? The mothers who didn't take care of their calves in the highlands there. The calves didn't survive and these genetics didn't continue. So these cows are really, really good mothers. And, you know, modern cow breeds, often you get rid of them after 10, 11 years or something like that. These cows have the ability to, to um, give birth to a healthy calf for over 20 years. 
So that is amazing. Now this breed grows much slower than modern cattle breeds, but it finishes real well on grass, even on poor pastures. Like even if you have really, really bad grass and bad pastures, this cattle breed um, eats it all. They eat all the herbs and everything, the weeds, and they finish quite well on it. So these are the reasons why we've gotten this cattle breed. And we are actually going to crossbreed with another breed that's very similar to this, also coming from Scotland, the Galloway, the Belted Galloway, um, because they have the same good instincts as this breed. But when you crossbreed them, the calves grow faster. They grow about 30% faster than the Scottish Highland cattle, and they grow about 15% faster than the um, Belted Galloway if you crossbreed those two cattle breeds. Um, and then, then those calves, the, cross, the, the, the mixture between Highland cattle and Belted Galloway, we will crossbreed, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think we'll crossbreed them with, um, with a Hereford um, bull. Because all these three cattle breeds are breeds that finish really well on grass and we will only feed grass and they will only be on pasture or get hay in the winter. Um, we will not feed grain or something else. So those are the reasons. So the vision is to, to be able to, to build up a flock and then sell alongside with our vegetables and our eggs and our pasture poultry to also offer um, grass finished beef or like like others call it in the States, um, salad bar beef, because they will be moved daily to new pasture during the summertime um, where they will get a new salad bar, not just grass, herbs and all different kinds of things. So that brings me to my next um, Q&A point here, the fence system. Now many people have commented and, and said, you know, we should have six feet tall um, barbed wire fences and, and all of that. And you know, <laughs> I have never known that there to be such a big cultural difference between uh, the comments came mainly from the US between the US and us here but I have never in my life seen a fence like that on a farm here in Sweden or in Germany or in, in, in other European countries that I've visited um, that's just unheard of and I don't know why that is really um, you know, I'm not saying it's it's bad to do it or whatever, but it's just not the case here. Now, we've never had any problems with our electric fencing. I know of farmers who do this in the United States as well. One wire for cows, two wires for sheep. Actually, a farmer where we bought sheep from for a while, he had one electric wire 30 centimeters off the ground for his sheep. They didn't go over. Because every year, you know, he had hundreds of sheep. Every year there would be maybe four or five that would go over and he would get rid of them. So um, we want a very calm flock. We want a flock that is easy to manage and we need a fence system that enables us to move the flock daily. They will just get as much grass, as much as big of a um, piece of land every summer day that they can eat. And then you need to adjust the size, which you do with these fence posts and an electric wire and you move them daily. So that's why we need this kind of fencing system and it works fine, it works great. We've, um, you know, obviously if there's some enormous stress, the cows will run through there, but I think if there's some enormous stress, a cow will also run into a barbed wire fence and she will get seriously injured. So that's how we do it. That's how many, many farms do, do it here. And who is to say that all the farms here do it wrong? Um, I'm not to say that all the farms in the States do it wrong either. But I, I just try to see, uh, try to explain a little bit how we have it. Um, I don't want my farm to look like a prison either. We have customers visit our farm in the summer almost daily, and they are free to go and see where their food walks around anywhere. So our future plan is really, I've mentioned it a little bit, to um, to create um, a product with the cattle that has extraordinary meat quality and that we can sell. Um, to the customer network that we have already built up or started to build up and um, that uh, yeah that we will be able to send them to a slaughterhouse 
and take the meat back and then deliver it to our customers. And um, the system that we have, it's also copied from Polyface Farm. The cattle goes first and then we have a mobile chicken house called an egg mobile mobile an egg mobile that um, where the chickens my laying chickens go after the cows and they actually um, scratch out the cow pies and clear off the pasture so i hope you enjoyed this information about the cows there have been a lot of questions and i know they are world famous now <laughs> we still haven't decided with sally but um yeah they're ups and downs you know we the, the uh, one alternative is to give her a chance to get a calf and then just really observe just to really observe how she will be with that calf and then you can still slaughter her after that calf um, there's, there's a risk that it won't work but there's a risk that it'll work well so who knows she's not afraid of the cows anymore though right now so that's that's a positive thing she's very interested though in the in Biffen because Biffen, he just went where he's not supposed to go. Because Biffen, he's the only bull here. He's a bull calf. Hey Biffen, can you get out of there please? Hey, come on. You're standing in your mother's lunch. That's not very nice. It's not very nice. Hey, mister. Mister? You just want to go cuddle that little teddy bear looking calf here. He is so cute. I think we got to give them a papa cow. Hey Lisa, what's going on? A little shy? You're the youngest, I know. Except for Biffen, but he's under mommy's protection still. But Biffen, seriously. I know you're close to your mom and you kind of like standing in the food. <laughs> this is the first time that um, I've seen him in the food here. There has been no manure in here. I might have to put something around here so that he can't urinate or um, poo in the food here. But we'll, we'll figure that out. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Look at them. You know, there's some YouTubers out there some homesteaders on YouTube who uh, don't have any animals on their homestead. I just think that's it's very boring. This is the traditional way to live with the bond between nature and, and animals on a homestead. And gosh, I just love it. This helps me get get through the dark and long winters here, where you can just have the social contact, um, not just with the family and other people, but also with the animals. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little update and got to meet um, all our cows, got to hear their names. Stay tuned uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.